All right, chemistry class, I'm going to do a real titration uh, using some chemi chemistry glassware. I know the titration you guys did at home wasn't ideal. Uh, you guys did great, um, but you probably noticed it's really hard to titrate when I'm using little plastic vials that Mr. Ford gave me too much solution in, and these markings are really hard to read. I can't be very precise with it. And that's correct. So chemists, right, use titration to determine how concentrated a solution is, typically acids and bases. You can titrate other things, okay? And to do this, they use very precise glassware. So you'll notice standing right here, this is called a burette. It's basically a, a fancy test tube with a valve. It's also, it's actually a graduated cylinder. It's graduated, if you guys can see on here, sorry, the numbers are very small. Those bottom numbers end at 50. Each one of these numbers is a milliliter. So that's 47 milliliters, 48, 49, 50. And up at the top, I know it's weird to have that at the top, but that's zero, okay? And the reason we mark from the top and go down, if you have liquid in here and it drops from say zero to 25, you know you've used 25. And a lot of times we won't fill it all the way to the top. So you might fill it up to the, the 10 milliliter mark. And if you dispense from 10 milliliters, say down to 40 milliliters, well, that, that's a difference of 30 milliliters. Um, the little tiny lines are a tenth of a milliliter, and your eyeball can actually go one decimal place farther than that. So this will actually be precise down to the hundredth of a milliliter. So you can get a lot of sig figs uh, in your calculations and, calculate and determine concentrations down to the uh, three sig fig levels with this stuff. So um, using this, right, you had markings every like five milliliters. And for the vinegar on your pipette, you only had markings every one milliliter and no markings really in between, maybe a half a milliliter, but it was really hard to estimate. So um, here's, here's how real titration works. Now, you might not be able to see all, a lot of this, but it's off camera, but you know, bear with me. I have vinegar. So this is, imagine instead of dropping with a, a pipette, you're gonna use a burette and I'm just gonna top this off. I've already got some in there because I was setting up Okay. So I just have a little glass funnel to help me fill it. Again, if you were in school, we would be doing a lot of these. It is a very important technique and it's kind of fun. Um, so I've got uh, the titrant, what I'm titrating with or I'm using, this is my vinegar. Now vinegar, I haven't told you this until now. Vinegar, okay, the stuff inside, oh, I'm sorry, I have been painting all morning. Um, the stuff inside the jug is 0.85 molar. So uh, I, I haven't measured it, but I just have referenced it. I've done the analysis of it before. Let's just assume that the vinegar that you had was 0.850 moles per liter, okay? We're gonna be analyzing some sodium hydroxide Okay, and the sodium hydroxide is approximately, I'm gonna show you the jug, it's from the 0.1 molar jug. And instead of titrating a small amount, I can be much more precise if I titrate a larger amount. So I'm gonna titrate 10 times as much as you guys did. So it should roughly take about 10 times as much vinegar as, as you guys got in your results because I'm just doing a larger volume of it, okay? And then you'll note I've just got a burette start and ending that I'm gonna fill in so you guys can see. But this is the process of a titration, okay? So see if you can follow along. I've got vinegar in the burette. Okay, this is just a little waste beaker and I've got a little valve, okay? So I'm gonna switch over. This is a clean beaker. And instead of titrating 15 milliliters, here's the jug. You can see it's approximately 0.1 molar. And I've got a graduate cylinder. I'm gonna fill up 150 milliliters. So here is, now again, precision matters. So I'm just gonna check, so there's 100. And 50. Now, you'll notice, I'm not gonna be super precise, there's still some of that sodium hydroxide in here. If I was doing this repeatedly and trying to be very precise, I would rinse with water all of that 150 milliliters. I would make sure every bit of sodium hydroxide that I've measured has made it into there. For simplicity, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, but you know, that's just like the better you get at something,
the more precise you get. So I'm um, just practicing. So now I've got my sodium hydroxide in here. You guys will notice that it's clear. Okay, I've got my cabbage juice indicator. I just did this in the lab microwave. Okay, I'm just gonna add a small amount so that we can see the color. And this should kind of match yours now, girl. I'll add a little more to try and make this intense and I'll try and hold a white background. Right now it's green. So this should match yours. Okay, there's the green. Now, and sorry, it's gonna blend weird. Oh, this is terrible colors, yellow and green. I did not plan for this, but I was just out helping the senior barbecue. So I felt like I had to wear lion gear. Now I'm regretting my decision for this uh, color combo. So I apologize, Beaver fans. Oh, I'm a little disgusted with myself. We'll fix it, we're gonna fix it. This is gonna change color. So I know on my burette that this is sitting at 10.0 milliliters. So a good chemist would note the starting and actually I can go down to the hundreds cause it's right on the line. So that's 10.00 milliliters. And the way I do this, I'm gonna titrate to the equivalence point. Now the equivalence point is where this is gonna to turn to that purplish color. So what I do, I slowly open. A lot of times we use stir plates, okay? So that we don't have to swirl. We would use nicer glassware than this even, okay? But again, this is just for demo. Okay, sorry, this is not super exciting. You can see what's going on. I'm getting more and more, maybe a little change in color. Now, if you guys remember, when you did your small scale titration, it took two milliliters to neutralize your small sample. Well, this sample is 10 times larger, so this should take approximately uh, 20 milliliters. So I've used up so far about 12. I'll slow down when I get close. Now, that's the other thing about titration. I noted a lot of you guys may have gone past the equivalence point. What your goal on a titration is, you wanna neutralize the solution being analyzed, but you don't wanna overdo it. You wanna get to just the point where it changes colors, and I feel like I'm splashing, so I'm gonna grab a stir rod. Again, this is, again, not a super precise. It's much more precise than, than your mini titration, but we would do this with more precision. Okay, and I might have. You guys see what's happening? It's hard to tell. Kind of went fast there. I got a definite color change. Now, I haven't hit the red. Um, I've used, now this is one good step. I think I told you guys to titrate to a purplish, reddish endpoint. I've used, so far, 18 milliliters. And am I right on the line? I'm not quite on the line. I'm actually at 28.05. Sorry, that's hard to read, 28.05. But I'm gonna note that that's just where it went clear. And I'm gonna see if I can get it pink. Now, I don't know what the scale and my cabbage juice was a little old because uh, my cabbage had sat unrefrigerated. So I don't know if it's gonna turn pink, but I know that my end point was at right now at 28.05. And I'll just add a little more. Oh yes, okay, I can see a very, this is very, very faint. This is a light pink color, okay? It's very light pink, okay? And so I should probably record 28.15. and I'll see if I can go. Now this is probably what happened in your lab. I definitely see you guys kept going. That's just, this is probably exactly what happened. You kept going to try to achieve a darker shade of red. Now, different indicators behave differently. Um, if we were doing this in the lab for real, we would use, instead of cabbage juice, we would use phenothalein, and that was that magenta indicator. Okay, so, um, I'm gonna go with this, 28.15. So, to find the amount of sodium hydroxide that I, or sorry, vinegar that I use, I'm gonna subtract my ending amount, right? I'm gonna take my start amount from my end amount. So 28.15 minus 10, I used 18.15 milliliters, okay? So I used 18.15 milliliters 
of vinegar to neutralize that. So I didn't quite use the, the 20 that I had estimated, but it was pretty close. And this is much more precise. Now, sorry, this is gonna be a little longer, um, a little longer video. So sodium hydroxide plus acetic acid, okay, will neutralize. Your acid bases always make a salt, and they always make water. Okay, so this is the salt sodium acetate, and then this is right our water. Okay, so you'll notice this neutralization is one to one. It takes one mole of acetic acid for one mole of sodium hydroxide. Okay, everything's balanced, so the coefficients are one. So what is really cool, I'm gonna put boxes around these. In this titration, because it's one to one, and because I stopped right at the equivalence point, I know that the moles of sodium hydroxide and the moles of, of acetic acid in my beaker are equal, okay? It's a one to one ratio, I know they're equal. So going back, I can calculate from this, I know the molarity and I know the volume, sorry, I know the volume of the sodium hydroxide I used and I know uh, the, let's see, the molarity of the vinegar and the volume of vinegar that I use. So I'm gonna set up a little calculation. First of all, I'm gonna calculate my vinegar. Okay, I used 150 milliliters, which is 0.15 liters, and I used 18.05, or what was it? No, 18.15. So I used 18.15 liters, milliliters, which is 0.018. One five liters, and sorry, it was 0.85 molar. I got to write this out again. 0 0.850 molar times 0 0.01815 liters. That's 18.15 liters, and I'm going to multiply those. And again, when you multiply a molarity times a volume, you end up in moles. So, sorry, I'm trying to write big so you can see. Point oh one eight one five times point eight five. Sorry, you get point oh one five four three moles of vinegar. Okay, so that's how many moles of vinegar that I used. Well, since it's a one to one ratio, then I know I also. have the same amount of moles, okay? So here's the sodium hydroxide. So I know I've got that many moles. And if you know, I just did molarity times volume equals moles. I'm gonna plug in what I know. So I know the volume that I titrated was 150 milliliters. And I know the number of moles because I just found my equivalence point. And I'm gonna solve for the molarity, okay? So I could also rearrange it. Molarity is moles over volume. So I'm gonna take my moles and divide by the volume. So I get 0 0.01543 moles divided by 0 0.150 liters. That's 150 milliliters that I titrated. Okay, and I'll divide those. I get 0 0.103 with sig figs correct. And that comes out to molar. So if you guys, if you guys remember, okay, this was this was the big jump, the vinegar and the sodium hydroxide, because we found the equivalence point, we know that the number of moles are equal. Okay? And that's because of the stoichiometry. Now after that, we use our volume that we titrated and we can calculate moles over liters. It comes out to 0 0.103, which this is approximately 0 0.1. And what we just proved, the whole point of a titration 
is to prove its molarity. So I knew it was approximately 0.1. Now I know for certain with precision, it's 0.103 molar. Okay, and again, this whole process to find that concentration, when you're finding concentration, that's called a titration. Okay, just like when you're finding the mass of something, we call it weighing. Well, when we find the concentration, we say we're titrating. Okay, so that's the word. Hopefully that's not too long. My glasses are getting foggy. I guess I'm, I'm getting excited about chemistry. Um, you guys have, have no idea how much I miss being in here with you. Uh, this is probably the end of, of uh, probably activities for us. Um, I'm going to talk to Mr. England and maybe set up kind of another set of titration calculations. It might not be a video. You might just get some data. And what your job will be is to calculate the, the concentration of the unknown. Okay, so we titrate a lot. Uh, had we been here, we would have titrated a lot. If you take AP chemistry, not next year, but maybe uh, – your senior year or I guess two years from now, we'll do a lot of titrating. It's a really valuable lab technique. Um, it's fun to do. Uh, you can do many different combinations of acids, bases, indicators. So it's kind of the foundational thing or, and it's also the culminating thing for the year. So I really hope you enjoyed uh, trying to do this lab. Um, if we continue with distance learning at all next year, I'm gonna do my best to make sure we come up with fun ways to do hands-on stuff and we're gonna make we're gonna make the best of this um, it's been really interesting I've really enjoyed getting creative and and trying to uh, do things online I've learned a lot so hopefully hopefully you're still excited about school you're still excited about chemistry and uh, I, I'm really excited to see you when we're all back so have a really good summer if I don't talk to you again um, stay safe uh, and I'll talk to you later